Now, this is the third video in the series of uh, videos on the chapter on photosynthesis. Now, in this, we are going to discuss uh, the 13.2 E. It says carry out investigations on the effects of light intensity, carbon dioxide, and temperature on the rate of photosynthesis. So, we have to study the rate of photosynthesis. Now, rate is always something to do with time. So rate cannot be, you cannot disassociate rate and time. So rate of photosynthesis, if you look at the O-level equation, it's carbon dioxide plus water gives you glucose plus oxygen. So carbon dioxide, water, glucose plus oxygen. I haven't balanced it. But either we can study the, the first point which I've written, either we can study the volume of oxygen produced per unit time volume of oxygen produced per unit time or we can maybe we can somehow study the volume of carbon dioxide used per unit time but there's a slight uh, catch in both of these because you must realize that oxygen is produced by photosynthesis but it's also used in respiration moreover carbon dioxide is produced by respiration and then used in photosynthesis so please remember to consider both of them when you're studying uh, doing this experiment now, another thing which has been specified is that we have to use aquatic plants such as uh, Elodia and Kabomba, the pictures of which I have given you. Now, these are usually called aquarium plants. And because you see in an aquarium, we would need them to produce the oxygen for the fish. So you can get these from shops where, you know, where they sell aquariums. And these are aquatic plants. So we've got to study these. And the other one is this one, which I have just, uh, Kabomba, which has to be used. And these are the two names mentioned in your syllabus. So we have to study the rate of photosynthesis. Now the rate of photosynthesis can only be studied if we can somehow measure either the bubbles of oxygen produced, or we can somehow measure the volume of oxygen produced per unit time. Now, the different experiments or the different uh, apparatuses used, I've given you two here. The three factors which we have to investigate is, number one, light intensity. Please understand if you just write light, I can't uh, possibly give you marks in the exams because light doesn't mean anything, but the wavelengths of light or the intensity of light. So please be specific and write intensity of light. So you have to be very careful when you are writing in your exams. So light intensity. Then carbon dioxide concentration, because please remember this pond weed. This pond weed must have been in a pond. And in a pond, there would be a lot of microorganisms, or they could be fish, or they could be tadpoles, or they could be frogs, and they're producing carbon dioxide. So if you're going to take this out of the pond and then use it in the lab, you have to be careful what a liquid are you going to provide? You can't provide pond water because in pond water you won't know the concentration of carbon dioxide. And moreover, pond water could be very, very harmful because uh, there could be some microorganisms in it which would cause um, some sort of a skin rash on your hands. And if you touched it even by mistake, you could be causing some sort of allergic reactions. So number two, we have to study, the, we have to study number one, light intensity. Number two, carbon dioxide concentration and number three temperature so we've got to study these three that's what's been mentioned in your syllabus now the apparatus that i have drawn here is a very simple apparatus so we've got a beaker and uh, we've got an inverted funnel and inside the inverted funnel we have the pond weed and in it we have then placed a lamp at a fixed distance and we put a heat shield in front of it. Heat shield is something which is made of glass and it's got water in it. So only light can pass through. So only light can pass through and no temperature should be changing. You see, we don't want the temperature of this beaker changing because then we could say, somebody could argue that it's the temperature which is causing an increased rate of photosynthesis. So we're going to change the light intensity now, of course, how we change the light intensity is, number one, we can move the lamp. Number two, we can increase the number of lamps. Number three, we can increase the power of the bulb. 
So we can do different ways by which we can change the light intensity. That's also come in one of your paper five. How would you change the light intensity? Give three different methods of changing the light intensity. And then, of course, we have to put some sort of a liquid in this because this has been taken from, this has to be the pond weed, has to be in something which is uh, producing carbon dioxide. So this could be, you could use a chemical, which is 1% sodium hydrogen carbonate solution. So 1% one, 1 or 2% or 3%, that's up to you, but you have to use one here because you'll have to keep this constant. This will have to be kept constant because you're going to change one item, which is light intensity. So this is what we are changing is the light intensity. And then, of course, we can either measure the bubbles of oxygen which are coming out of it. So you can say bubbles per minute or bubbles. But bubbles per minute is not a very good way. Why? Because bubbles per minute, bubbles would be of different sizes. And uh, it would be better if we sort of measured the volume of oxygen. And so we could place a syringe on top of this. And this could be a gas syringe, and we could measure the volume of oxygen produced. So we could either do this, or we could measure the bubbles, which is, of course, both would not be uh, incorrect, but they would be accepted. So we're going to measure the light intensity. Now the same apparatus would then be used to measure, as it says in your syllabus, uh, the effects of carbon dioxide concentration. So, but before we go into carbon dioxide concentration, I would like to talk about the graph, uh, which is considering light intensity. <clears throat> so light intensity, if you plot on the x-axis, and we have the rate of photosynthesis on the y-axis. So we get a graph like this, we get an increase and then it levels out. Now, if you look at from point A to point B, a to B, whatever is written on the x-axis, in this case it's light intensity, light is the limiting factor. Light is the limiting factor. So whatever is written on the x-axis of the graph, that will be the limiting factor because it means if the light is say 1, the rate of photosynthesis is 10 and then we increase it to 2, the rate of photosynthesis goes up to 20. So light is the limiting factor. But from B to C, if you look at B to C, light is no longer limiting now. Light is no longer limiting. And some other factor is limiting, and this could be either temperature or it could be CO2 concentration. So even if you wrote some other factor limiting, that also gets you a mark. So some other factor limiting would also get you a mark for the point if you wrote it between B and C. <clears throat> now you see the rate is constant. Please understand, we haven't said reaction has stopped. The rate is constant. The rate is constant, just like you press the accelerator so the car will, the, the maximum, the car will go at a certain speed. It's, it's still moving the car. So the rate is constant, and this is the graph that we have for light intensity. And this is one of the points, if, if, even in 13.2a, explain the terms limiting factor. Now, what is happening? Why is the rate not increasing? Because you're increasing light. What you've got to understand is that there are the PS2 and the PS1s. That means all of them are being cited. There isn't any more PS2, PS1s. Is a limiting factor. PS2, PS1s are determined by the number of chloroplasts, by the number of pilocoids. So all PS2, PS1s are being activated, and that means there is enough ATP and NADPH being made, and no more can be made. So explain the term limiting factors and explain the effects of changes. Now that is 13.2 A and B of the syllabus. Explain the effects. Okay, the next thing that we study is CO2 concentration. Now the only thing which you will have to change is in that experiment, you will have to change the, the pond weed remains the same, but what you'll have to do is, what you'll have to do is you'll have to 
change this shorba inside it and you'll have the lamp you are not going to change the lamp now the lamp is going to stay where it is you can have the heat shield please do not say remove the heat shield that will be very wrong if you say that so we remain the heat shield but now what you're going to do is you're going to first do the experiment with 1% sodium hydrogen carbonate solution then important volume must remain the same say you had 100 ml in it so volume will remain 100 ml but then you will change this so the next time you will take 2% but the volume will remain the same. Please remember that. You can't change the volume. The volume must remain the same. So the next time you'll take 2% and then you'll measure the bubbles coming out per unit time or you'll measure the volume of gas produced per unit time and then you will change it to 3%. So you will keep on changing the sodium hydrogen carbonate sodium hydrogen carbonate solution. You'll change the concentration of that so this then you will see does it really affect maybe it doesn't maybe it doesn't you're just going to it's somebody's conjecture that you know it does change it so we're going to see if it does change it or not and then we see and then we plot all this on a graph and we get a graph like this so on the x-axis we plot co2 concentration and we say we give the units and percentage and here we have the rate of photosynthesis PS is for photosynthesis, that's not a standard abbreviation, please do not use that. So the rate increases and then the rate levels off. It's the same sort of thing like we had for light intensity. Now A to B, as I told you, it's what is on the x-axis. So A to B, the CO2 concentration is limiting. Right? B to C. Now some other factor is limiting, which could be now temperature and light. Now what is happening at C? Now another thing is we have to explain this. Explain this. What is happening between B to C? The ATP and NADPH being made is enough to make the Calvin cycle run a certain number of times. So now the rate of photosynthesis which is the volume of oxygen being released by the light dependent stage is going to remain the same because what we have to understand is that there's a certain amount of light there's a certain light which we've kept because we've kept the lamp at a certain distance we're not changing the lamp so the lamp stays at the certain distance we haven't changed this so the light which is being emitted is going to be resulting in a fixed number of ATP and NADPH being produced. Now that will result in the Calvin cycle running a fixed number of times in a per unit time. So maybe it runs 10 times or 20 times or 30 times per second. So the Calvin cycle will generate a certain amount of glucose and a certain amount of oxygen being produced per unit time. So now this is the explanation of the effects of changes in light intensity. Then we have temperature. Next we have to study temperature. Whenever we have to study temperature, I ask you to take five temperatures. So please take five. You can take any. I'm just mentioning 30, 35, 40, 45. You can take any which you like, but you have to mention this. So it's degrees Celsius. And please remember to write the units. Don't forget to write the units. So what you will do now is you'll place that beaker which you had with the inverted funnel and with the pond weed and with the sodium hydrogen carbonate shorba. Now you'll place this in a water bath. And this water bath is an indirect way of heating. And of course you'll keep a thermometer in it and you will keep it at a certain temperature whichever you want to do you want to keep it at 30 degrees celsius fine keep it at 30 degrees celsius so you will maintain the temperature with the use of a water bath and then you will study the bubbles produced per unit time so same experiment the lamp is going to be at the same place we are not going to change the lamp please do not say remove the heat shield because that will result in the temperature changing no we don't know how much temperature will it change.
so this is not a correct way this is not the scientific way to do it so you will place it in a water bath and you will change the temperature now the graph that you get so if you place temperature here on the x-axis and you have the rate of photosynthesis on the y-axis so you're going to get a graph which is a very important graph is you get a graph like this which means that it is a graph which we plot for enzymes and as we all know that uh, photosynthesis is an enzyme controlled reaction we need enzymes for number one the photolysis of water and number two of course remember the very famous enzyme called rubisco so we need enzymes for different stages of the photosynthetic so you get a graph which is very typical of this proves that this is an enzyme controlled graph this temperature x will be the optimum temperature of course this will vary for different plants so optimum temperature will vary for vary for different plants um, some you know you know some plants are very favorably grow and fruit in the winters and some very favorably fruit and grow in the summers like we have mangoes in the summer but we have oranges in the winter so every plant will have its own optimum temperature uh, that finishes this 13.2 a b and e part of uh, the syllabus uh, of cambridge the next video will be on the c4 plants and that will be for 13.3 which is adaptations for photosynthesis thank you students